If something's good, it's obviously worth pursuing. But there are way more good things out there than we could possibly ever fill our lives with. And often acquiring one good thing means not acquiring something else that's good. Because there are clear differences in ranking between good things, a good coffee, for instance, isn't as good as a good friendship, it's important to think about these as potential trade-offs. Today we're going to explore an exciting possibility, one that has been a central question in philosophy. What if there's a greatest good that can help us order and organize all of the other good things in our life? Philosophers like to talk about things that are good. Good actions, good pens, good habits, and good lives. And many think that the order or organization of those goods within the structure of one's life matters a great deal. Suppose you have good friendships early in life and a good job later, but the job came at the expense of those friendships and you end up dying wealthy and alone. Clearly, even though you had, in some global sense, two separate elements of a good life, they didn't come in the right order and they weren't well balanced. So having all the goods in life just isn't enough. They've got to fit into the right kind of structure. But how do we determine what this is? Imagine yourself taking a moment to write down a list of all of the things you think are good. If you're anything like me, you might have listed things like money, spending time with my family, sleeping in late on Saturday mornings, teaching, maintaining close friendships with those I care about. Now, Aristotle, our main guy for this unit, had a lot to say about the relationship between the various goods that one might put on such a list. In the remainder of this lesson, I'm going to boil this down for you. According to Aristotle, some of the good things we want are good all by themselves. Things like spending time with family, maintaining close friendships. Some of the things we want are good only insofar as they allow us to acquire the goods that are good all by themselves. Money, for instance, allows me the time and comfort to develop close relationships with friends and family. Of the things that are good in themselves, we can see a certain sort of order emerging as well. We spend time with family and cultivate close friendships because this makes us happy. Because without such relationships, we'd be ultimately unfulfilled. Now again, skimming over some of the details, Aristotle thinks that we can arrange all of these goods into a kind of hierarchy, with the lesser goods toward the bottom and the greater goods, the ones we desire for their own sake, toward the top. Aristotle thought there was ultimately only one good we desire for its own sake, and this he called flourishing, or eudaimonia. We won't presuppose that Aristotle was right about what this ultimate good was, and for our purposes, it'll just be clarifying to think about hierarchies like Aristotle's, and about what, if anything, we think all of the other goods point towards. Aristotle is not the only philosopher to argue for a single organizing good. Here are some of the most influential candidates for the title of greatest good. Existentialists like Hannah Arendt, Jean-Paul Sartre, Simone de Beauvoir, Albert Camus, to some extent Soren Kierkegaard, they all thought the greatest good was authenticity in your actions. Immanuel Kant thought it was fulfilling your duties with a purely pure motive, and that this was the ultimate expression of moral freedom. On the darker side, Friedrich Nietzsche thought the greatest good consisted in transcending the bonds of traditional morality, that all human action was ultimately driven by a will to possess and exert power. There are, of course, different ways to figure out which view of the ultimate good you think is true. You can discern how your priorities are shaped by your values. You can study the lives of moral heroes or cultivate relationships with moral role models. Or you can dive right into the philosophical texts and see how the question can be approached in a purely intellectual way. The important thing from our perspective is that you are even asking these questions at all, and that you've now got all the resources you need to start answering the question, what makes a life good for yourself?